you want to see something small, you might hold it closer to your eyes. But if you hold it too close, everything's blurred and the eyes can't cope. But there is an instrument which can improve your eyesight. That's a microscope. They can vary from this quite fancy one here to a simple magnifying glass. Either way, they open up a whole new world. And this is Dr. Stephen Carter from the Buxton Microarium to help us explore that world. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Teddy. What's a microarium? Well, I think the easiest way to explain the idea behind a microarium is to compare it with a planetarium. Uh, the planetarium displays the wonders of outer space as revealed by the telescope. And we go to the other end of the scale and invite our visitors to explore the wonders of inner space as shown through the microscope. What perhaps is not too obvious to everybody is that the world of inner space is, to an explorer, every bit as vast and as fascinating as the world of outer space. Well, to help us see that area, we've uh, rigged up a television camera to your microscope here, and we can see it on the screen. So what have you got for us to see first? Well, this is something which is uh, very common. Everybody has seen it sometime or another, but very few people really look at it carefully. Well, to me, it looks like a pile of sticks and stones. It is, in fact, a little sample of sand from the beach. Goodness. What are those uh, long sort of stick-like shapes? These green and purple shapes. They're yes. rather pretty, aren't they? Yes. Those are tiny fragments of sea urchin spines that have been ground up by the action of the waves and, and then bleached in the sun to this rather attractive colour. Now, it's all a lot bigger under the microscope, isn't it? How yes. much bigger? Uh, looking down this microscope, you see things about 20 times bigger. So that meant something as size of an apple perhaps would be about that big wouldn't it under the microscope right. yes. and as long as we could fit it under the microscope you'd be able to see the surface area in a lot more detail that's, that's correct yes. yes but you don't need anything quite so expensive as this microscope you can actually use a microscope similar to this one here right what else can we have a look at well here is um, a little clump of moss can you see that well, that's like walking through a jungle, isn't it? It is very much like a jungle. In fact, it's a microscopical jungle. And within that jungle, there are all sorts of strange and unfamiliar animals and plants. It's glistening a lot. There's obviously a lot of water on it. Yes, on each uh, leaf, th there is a thin layer of water which is causing that glistening. And in fact, it is within that layer that many of these fascinating animals live. But we couldn't see any of those animals using this sort of microscope, uh, could we? Not very easily. If we want to look at those more carefully, um, we need to use a microscope that we have over here. So first you have to get the water out of the moss, don't you? That's right. And how we do that is, first of all, we must start with the moss very moist. If you don't collect it moist, then it needs to be soaked in water for, say, a couple of days to revive the animals uh, that have been dried out. Then all you need to do is to put it in a plastic bag like that and squeeze the water out into a beaker like this. Yes, pretty dirty it looks too. Then we're going to make a slide uh, to put that water in and I've already put a piece of tape, adhesive tape, on this microscope slide with a cutout area which I'm now going to peel off. And we now put a microscope cover slip over that cutout area and simply tack it in position with two little pieces of adhesive tape. One will do there and one there. So you've made a very thin space underneath that glass. That's line. right. And we can well run the water from the moss into that space by drawing some up with a fine pipette and simply allowing it to run under the cover glass like that. Right, let's have a look at it. There then. we see what we've got. So what's this brown one here then? Well, the brown part is a special case that the animal has made. It's like a sort of vase. And originally it was attached to a moss leaf by the base there. Uh, but, of course, we've detached it by squeezing the moss. Ah. And a little animal that lives in there is now poking its head out, and you see it is creating a current, and those are all potential particles of food streaming towards it. 
Yes, everything's yeah. moving in the direction. That's right. If something too big hits it, it will disappear inside that little protective case. Now, what's that thing with wheels there? Uh, you say it's got wheels. In fact, that's an optical illusion. But um, early naturalists did, in fact, uh, refer to them as wheels. And they are two little lobes at the front end of the animal, which is called a rotifer, a wheel bearer. And hairs on those lobes are beating in, in a circle, in perfect synchrony. You see them there? Yeah. Uh, and creating a current in the water, uh, which draws the food towards it. You see those two things behind the head, which appear to be uh, gnashing together. Those are, in fact, the jaws, well back from the front of the animal, which are crushing the particles of food that are accepted. You see one going down the gullet then? So it's pulling in the particles, then they go yes, down Yes, you can see them streaming past the body, can't you? Yes, and then being chewed inside there. That's right. Now, that was just using ordinary light, wasn't it? But there are some tricks that you can do with the microscope, aren't there? Yes, and let's try one of those tricks using these crystals that you can get from a chemist. Now, I'm going to be handling these, so I'm going to put on a pair of gloves and some goggles, because you can't be too careful with handling any kind of chemical. Right, this is paradichlorobenzene moth crystals. Now, how are you going to get one of those underneath the microscope? Well, what we're going to do is to take a microscope slide and select one of these crystals. Quite a small crystal will do. Put it on the slide like that. Cover it with a microscope cover glass and then put it on the hot plate because these crystals melt at quite a low temperature right, it looks like it's starting to go there right now that's ready to go under the microscope is it no not quite i think we ought to put it aside to, to let it cool and let, let the crystals reform yes but i put this preparation already under the microscope so let's take a look at that well i must admit that looks a bit boring to me ah yes but now i see what happens when i do this oh that's stunning that is beautiful isn't it and you've got that effect by using polarized light haven't right. you now we used polarized sunglasses but i can't see how you get the effect Right, try turning one of those glasses until it goes black. Right, there, black, nothing. I see how I see blackness, but now I can't understand how you see the crystals. Well, let's see what happens when we put some crystals between those two lenses and turn them round. Ah, bright colours, what's happening? What is actually happening now is that the crystals have the effect of twisting the light. And give us those amazing patterns. Right, right now you have got polarised filters fitted in to that microscope, haven't you? Yes. But if you haven't got that on a microscope, can you use this sort of thing to get the same effect? Certainly. All you have to do, remember is to put one of those filters uh, below the level of the crystals and one of them somewhere above the level of the crystals and arrange so that you can rotate one of them until you get the effect that we've seen. Now, you have one more thing you can show us, don't yes. you? Yes. What I want to show you is these crystals actually growing. And in order to do that, I'll put this back on the hot plate, but only half of it so that it's overlapping the edge of the hot plate like that. Half of those crystals have now melted. I've got to put it back on the microscope, and with luck, we will see it's still melting at this stage. Right. That margin is now retreating, but when it's cooled down a little bit further, you'll see the crystals beginning to grow. There they go. That's beautiful. And they get slowly faster, they get progressively faster and faster as the crystals cool down and reform. So that's turning from liquid into crystals that's again. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that.